Hi everyone, we wanted to share a little sneak peek behind what we keep on our Patreon, which is our post shows. So here we have a post show from episode 16 of season 3, where I, Drew, predict what I think will happen in season 4. You can also go to our YouTube, which is youtube.com slash carryingwayward, to see this video version instead. And if you really enjoy these and you want to see more of them, including quite the backlog, be sure to join us at patreon.com slash carrying wayward. Thanks and enjoy the show. There we go. Thank you, robot lady. <laughs> Season three in the can. Season three is done. I, I am honestly in complete disbelief right now that we are done with season three. I feel like this is the end of an era. Yeah, I mean, going forward, we just have cast forever, right? He never goes anywhere. He's here for the next 12 seasons and he'll never be taken away from me. <laughs> um, So let's sidestep that. <laughs> <laughs> And um, I was wondering, because we finished season three, we're going into season four. And I know that Rochelle and I, so just to kind of like put it out there, yes, there are some uh, spoilers that Rochelle and I have been very careful not to give away, but there are some that you know. So as you just demonstrated, you know that Cass is arriving uh, Mm -hmm. in season four. Um, And I was kind of wondering, like, what do you think is going to happen in season four? Like, what are your, I guess, like top three or five like predictions? And then we can see as we go through the episodes, like what, okay. what actually comes true. Okay, go, hold on. I got to grab, I got to grab a paper. <laughs> <laughs> I want to write those down. Okay. Please. Yeah, I like this. Okay. So I, I know Dean gets rescued. Okay, yeah, but that's not a prediction. I, I, am, I am aware, but my prediction is how he gets rescued. Oh, okay. I, I, I know I've heard rumblings that like angels are part of the reason why he's saved, mm-hmm. but I still feel like it's going to play into the whole Sam being more demony aligned than we were ready for. I okay. feel like something in this is going to be like he has to embrace his demony side to even get access to hell to then let Cass go save him or something. But basically the only way to get Dean back is to embrace the demon side. Uh, Okay. So only way to get Dean back is to embrace demon-ness. Yes. (laughs) He's got to, he's got to release his demon a little bit to open the gate to get Dean out or something. Okay, so that's 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 one prediction. That's um, that's a pretty big one. On the bright side, like we know, we find out exactly how that happens in the first episode of season four. So you'll get your answer very quickly. Yeah, I, I don't I don't expect to have more than like a half episode before we get Dean physically back on our plane. Okay, cool. Like, oh, I'd is be that a prediction? If he goes, um call it a side prediction i don't think i I don't want to take up a main like one of my main three with that one but like so 1.1 so so like within the whole saving dean that will be concluded by the end of the first episode sorry dean will be saved by end of 401 okay fair enough cool cool Mm -hmm. um okay okay. we need a big bad we still have lilith yep and we still have questions about Ruby. Yeah. We we will have a mid-season or like a somewhere in the middle reveal of Ruby's true intentions, whether they be altruistic or she's been pulling the strings behind the scenes the whole time. Okay. Why mid-season? I'm curious about your logic behind that. I feel like it will allow... I, I feel like most modern TV, and I feel like this show kind of plays with it a bit, where you have your big bad that you're kind of chasing all season but somewhere in the middle there needs to be that catalyst to move into focusing on it versus it being kind of like in the background okay all right cool so, so like, it's a way yes, to kind of Lilith like focus. Will always kind of be yeah Lilith will always kind of be the shadow of it but Ruby will do something revealing her true intentions mm-hmm. and that will refocus the brothers on we got to go after that Lilith chick 
Okay. So then part of your predictions, either 2.1 or like three would be (laughs) that Lilith is the big bad of the season. Is that right? Yes. Yes. So Ruby will play a major part towards the focus and we'll learn more about her. But my final prediction is the big bad, whether they actually like, like Azazel, maybe they just like focus the fight on it, but don't actually Mm -hmm. finish it until another season. But like the big bad, the ultimate evil this season will be Lilith. Okay, great. Sounds good. So to summarize. Okay. Or, or did, is Lilith being the big bad, like a part of that prediction? I would, I would say a part because it seems okay. way too obvious. The fact that you're even making me question it now is a little concerning. That's so, the whole point, right? Like I'm just asking yeah. questions and trying to keep a straight face, which I can't do because I am not, but you know what I mean? Like just trying to like not show that I know exactly how this is going to happen. <laughs> even though I know you do because you were the expert and if you didn't know the show would fall apart. Um, okay, so just for myself to recap, we have my so almost like I have three predictions. My early prediction is Demon Power Sam saves Dean somehow. Mm-hmm. My mid-season prediction is Ruby reveals her plans and refocuses their efforts on Lilith, who is the big bad. And then my season finale is we find out something really messed up about angels. Like that angels are the actual bad guys or something. And then demons are secretly the good guys. Something really like... Okay, we find out really... Uh, we find out... Um, a- a- we find out angels are just as bad as demons. Woo! As demons. Okay, all right. So That's, my three uh, predictions. I have one. an early one, a mid one, and an end one. And what do you want more of in season four? Yes, I mean... Uh... <laughs> Okay, Cass aside, because technically you're not supposed <laughs> to know about Cass. <laughs> I, well, you okay, know, in complete seriousness, what I would like to see more of this season is a little more growth from the brothers independently of each other. Okay. I feel like... Time apart, perhaps? Not even necessarily time apart. Me, you know what? Yeah. Mm. Oh, tough one. I know. <laughs> I don't think it's a means to apart. an end, I think. Yeah. I think time apart is ultimately what I'm trying to say, but I think more of those moments where Dean isn't available or Dean is captured or Dean is gone. So Sam has to act on his own for a portion of the episode Mm -hmm. and is forced to confront things and make decisions and grow from it, Mm -hmm. which they did a little bit in this season, but I like to see them stick to it a bit more and kind of grow a little more with it. Okay. Like, well, I know I, I mean, have that little bit of like head cannon that came out on the uh, Discord recently, which was the because Sam was alone for six months uh, hunting the trickster, he grew yes. all these new skills, which we've seen mm-hmm. like being able to perform an exorcist for memory, um, yeah. like just, he, you know, the summoning ritual for Ruby that he clearly had to learn at some point. And when did that happen? Mm-hmm. Like, yes, it's a fanfic gap or implied, you know, like logic here, but it really feels to me like we got this alone time for Sam and we've now seen indirectly a benefit from it. I would like to see moments like that where they kind of get to grow on their own and keep Mm -hmm. a new skill. Well, so that brings me to another question because like you said, this season ends one on a cliffhanger and two, Mm -hmm. like, you know, he's in, Dean is in hell and he's like on the, on the meat hanger, like whatever. When do you think season four is going to pick up is it going to pick up immediately like on that uh living room floor or like does it pick up weeks months or years later i feel like i could see an argument for both my gut tells me it'll pick up on the living room floor kind of like the last cliffhanger did Mm -hmm. but i could also really see them cutting to like several months later and they're on the case trying to solve this you know sam and bobby or bobby catching up with sam who's kind of gone off the deep end again without Mm. dean trying to rescue him Mm -hmm. almost like a second half of uh mystery spot part two well that's what i was going to say um we've seen how sam is without dean we got like this tiny little like 
three minute montage preview. So I think like if it does pick up like a few weeks or a few months later, I think that's something to keep in mind. Yeah, I, I genuinely feel like you could start it either way and I could see how you do that in either way. I could even see an argument for both kind of where it starts with that moment there where Bobby comes in, finds Sam, realizes it, and then does like a cut to like several months down the road. Mm, yeah. Like kind of give us a bit of both. Like have like the the immediate reaction to help us really contrast with the where they are now. Like yeah. really give us a then and now. <laughs> start the start the season off right. Um very supernatural. <laughs> but I'll be very, I think I'll be most curious to see, and I really don't have a prediction for it. I guess I can kind of fight one if I need to. Um what is Sam going to be like this season having lost his brother, even getting him back? Yes. I think that, that... like, that's, that's got to do something to you. Like, I still feel like we got a new Sam after mystery spot than we did before. And I can only imagine what this is going to do to him again. Um, we'll see. <laughs> Now, so in terms of creatures... anything to me? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. Well, I was going to ask, uh, just to kind of turn the tables a little bit on you, obviously without spoilers, do you have any... Just yes or no's, do you have any key episodes or key plot points you can't wait for me to get to this season? Yes. <laughs> I, mean, I talked I'm not about that. I talked about some of those, like, in the... Um... Uh, on the TikTok live that that I did yesterday, I think I was like, I can't wait for us to get there so that Drew can see what happens. <laughs> I realized I meant to message you about that to see if it was safe to attend, and I totally spaced on it. Oh, that's fine. Honestly, like we did talk about a lot of spoilers, so it was better that you weren't there. I was actually yeah. checking. I, was I, like, I would definitely love there? to, like no, maybe at another good. time, do <laughs> one of those on TikTok where like I could be included and we make it yeah. a spoiler free one. Again, oh, there's always sure. risks, but one hundred percent. I'm a very slow reader. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I I think that in season mm, no season four has some really season four is emotional damage. <laughs> yeah, and going into this again, um, because I feel like I I always like to have this transparency with our listeners is I know for a fact I have seen episodes within season four. Mm -hmm. there is in fact one i can name specifically which is the 100th episode yeah again how much do i recall beyond like one or two scenes or the fact that it's in black and white mm -hmm. um but like and i'm sure there'll be one or two here and there where i'm like okay i do remember this episode now that i've seen it yeah but as i've proven before even episodes like mystery spot that i loved totally spaced on the ending <laughs> It's true. I mean, it's it's like selective memory, right? Like it's it's the yes. <laughs> I've shut out the darkness. Yes, there you go. So I was just going to ask you one last question about all this. Um, ask away. What creature would you like to see? Oh, that's a tough one. I think I, I love know, most right? seeing monsters that I either don't know, so I get to learn about, like the Krakata. But at the same time, there are a few really weird niche, a lot from Scotland and Ireland, like Kelpies mm, that I would kind of yes. love to see how they would take a take on those. Yeah. Um, I, I know, I think at some point you confirmed they do see a unicorn. And like, I feel like it'll be a trickster episode or something really bizarre. Um, again, through the grapevine, I know that at some point they do meet imaginary friends. Yes. So I can imagine an imaginary friend being a unicorn potentially. Um, and I would kind of just love to see some more like mythical creatures that are not necessarily depicted as evil or scary. Like I'd love them to come across like gnomes and just be like, oh yeah, gnomes are a thing. They like live in trees and do weird things and collect stuff. They're not a problem. We can just totally ignore them. Like just, they exist. Uh -huh. They're not important. <laughs> I feel like that would be like a very anticlimactic episode. Oh, I think because the whole goal is to, for them yeah. to hunt them down, right? So like, oh, oh no, we don't I think... need to hunt them down. Let's just go have beers with them. <laughs> I think it would have to be like a throwaway joke in an episode where like 
you know, they, they get into a case and it's like, oh, it turns out it was just ghosts haunting this house and the stuff that went missing was gnomes. You can't really deal with gnomes. You just kind of got to let them be. And yes. you sort of have like this, like, the, just, I want that moment of like, wait, gnomes are a thing and you're just not dealing with them and we're just ending it there? Okay. Yes. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of looking through the titles and I don't know that we get that in season four. I'm trying to think actually if we ever get that. Like a throwaway monster or like a not... Yeah. Like that—that that is something I really enjoy and there's a lot of like... I can mostly think of like cartoons that are generally mm-hmm. aimed at a younger audience where they do have those or you have like creatures that are not good or evil. They just are. Okay. Like I feel like Buffy almost does this with like some <laughs> vampires can be good or like you That's have true. those odd monsters who like have jobs in town that just don't kill things or kind of just like live like work in a bar and stuff. Well, we do sort of like more and more as the seasons go on, like the the line again, like this whole idea of like, what is a monster is mm-hmm. still very present and they start blurring a lot of lines when it comes to like monsters being monsters having humanity and humans um showcasing monstrosity i guess we can say it like that so we're there's yeah. definitely more of a back and forth it's much less black and white than it was in early seasons as we get yeah. on a little bit Um, And I think actually that season four is probably like a good introduction to that. Like, I I feel like we'll get to it later and I'm not going to go too much into it because I I need to rewatch the episode. But the episode, if I'm not mistaken, is called Monster Movie? Yes, that's it. Yeah, Yeah, I I, I know know what the creature of the week is. But like, if I'm not mistaken, isn't he like not evil? Like, if I, I might be misremembering, I'll have to rewatch it. But I feel like that's an episode where like they eventually get to him and then feel like realize he hasn't actually done anything wrong. He's just been living his life and doing his own thing and he's being blamed for other things. And it becomes like, I, I could be completely off. I'm misremembering things. I just remembered like, I know what, I, I don't want to say anything just for the sake of like, okay, fine, I'll put words on it. He's a changeling and he's just pretending to be famous movie monsters. But if I'm not mistaken, I feel like the big takeaway is like, he ends up not being the villain. I could be wrong. He could be the villain for I all think, we know. I think you I feel you're like wrong. he's not the villain. But it's so, again, I feel like it's one of those things where like you forgot the ending. <laughs> That's exactly it. Like I can, I, can, I can vividly picture like a single moment from the episode of like them confronting the changeling. Mm-hmm. And then other than that, it's very vague little things. But mm-hmm. even then, I know for a fact that later on we do meet a changeling who uh, is like a therapist or something. Yes, a, a shapeshifter who's a therapist. A shapeshifter yes, changing. Sorry, I'm getting my, my, yeah. my creatures mixed up. It's fine. Um, and as far as I'm aware, in that scenario, they are a non villainous mm-hmm. creature. Absolutely. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm very excited long term mm-hmm. to get to more scenarios where we meet creatures that are not necessarily good or bad. They just are. Yeah. And I really love that as a world building narrative tool well it just makes the whole world more interesting frankly because then it's, yeah it's you have to you as the viewer have to like take position on the characters a lot more than if they're you know monsters bad humans good yeah i just i think that's my favorite like whenever a show does this and there's tons of examples out there of shows that have done it I just, I really enjoy that. I know it's such a cliche of like, oh, it turns out they're not evil just because we think they are. But Mm -hmm. I just love that as a narrative. Okay, I'm going to take it back again. Oh my God, this is, again, if I don't do this, I'm never going to live it down. But yes, absolutely. There are creatures that are not, um, that are supernatural, but that are are not harmful. Oh yeah, for sure. We talked about one of them, actually. So yeah. Yeah, I'm sure there are. And I'm not going to hold it again for the listeners as well. As much as it's fun to harp on Mary making mistakes because it's so rare, <laughs> I have the same thing with my wife. Whenever she makes a mistake, I like, I, I tell her, I'm like, listen, I get like five solid minutes of mocking you for this because you never make mistakes and I never get this opportunity. You get to make fun of me being wrong like every day. <laughs> oh, I know what I am. And I know who I am. And I'm proud of it and I make mistakes. <laughs> so when I get <laughs> to turn to my do. wife and. 
not to call anyone out, but to one of our listeners who admitted this on TikTok as well for not realizing narwhals were real animals. Yes. I get to make fun of you a little bit because you're going to make fun of me a lot more in our life. (laughs) Absolutely. I mean, I would like to think that I don't make fun of you, but that's just... Oh, no, 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 no. (laughs) When I say make fun of, it's take... It, it, laugh with me at my my mistakes in a way where it never feels that's like I'm fine. being laughed at, but I'm getting to share in the joke. Yes, there you go. I think that's much better. Yes. Well, I yes. am very much looking forward to starting season four. Oh, so I can't am I. believe that we're there already. Um, <sighs> yeah, <laughs> time has flown. I feel like I feel like season one was like a marathon, and season just season one through three feels like no time has passed. Yeah, I I agree with that. I agree with that. Well, anyway, thank you so much for sharing your predictions thank and you. your hopes for with me. Um, and uh, let's see we'll how see wrong I happens. can be. <laughs> let's see. <laughs> let's let's see. <laughs> have a yeah, good everyone, evening. have a good evening. <laughs> <laughs>